What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tech to Titan and Solid Steps to Wealth podcast. We have some of our coaching clients here who are going to share with us the advantages of being an appliance repair, the experiences from their perspectives, and they all represent the entire diaspora of appliance repair. We're going to start out with Nicole. She's out of uh, Atlanta. Nicole, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're in appliance repair, your experience, and the different asset, uh, excuse me, facets that you deal with on a daily basis. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicole. Uh, I actually love appliance repair. Um, I got into appliance repair probably about a year ago. Um, initially, I started out in California um, watching a video um, from appliance boot camp and heard Miss Ward talking and looked at her page and asked her a few questions as we were starting up our business. Um, so we have our own business. And also I work for a corporate company that does major appliances as well. And um, so far it's been really, really great. Um, it's allowed us to move from California to Georgia. It's allowed us to grow our business and and learn the areas and which appliances we should specialize in with the help of Ms. Ward and actually seeing it from a corporate perspective. Um, so a lot of the advantages are we are able to move around. We're not just stagnant in one, one area. We're able to, cause I'm a mother of three and I originally was just a homeschool stay at home mom, but now I work from home in appliance repair. We have our own business in appliance repair and it's thriving. Um, it's been really important to us because we can actually like, like working at the corporate job for me is almost like having my own business because I'm at home and still able to do all of my day and things with my children, homeschooling and everything like that. So it's really worked for us. And I'm also able to make phone calls, send out invoices, um, do marketing for our own business. So it's really worked out as far as an economic perspective and advantage for our family. Um, some of the disadvantages, I would say, and being a part of the appliance repair business is, you know, I've received a few complaints from customers on things that really we had no um, way around, so to say, like it may not have been on the technician's part. It may have been just, you know, customers just wanting their their own way of doing things. But I've learned to how to move through that, maneuver through it with customer service, with skills and you know, um, just being able to be a listening ear for the customer. Uh, so that was my only disadvantage because everything else is actually pretty great. Um, so the facets I have is own business and working for a corporate company. And my experience is about a year. So I manage technicians, I order parts, I search for, order, for parts that are on back order on where I can get them. I find different companies that can rebuild things. So I'm pretty much doing everything between routing and invoicing and just Samsung and manu manufacturers. So I do everything as far as the corporate side. In our business, we I do the same. So that's my experience and kind of what I do on a day-to-day basis. So one last question. Now, before you uh, start coaching with me, um, what difference did it make just us having conversations, you get into my coach, into the coaching, how did it affect the business? Did it clarify? Just a short little something about that. Oh, absolutely. So before I got into the coaching, I was kind of at the beginning stages. I had just signed up with um, the warranty companies and I was kind of getting uh, our business bank account together set up. And when I was talking to Miss Ward, I was a little confused on like where to go with how to kind of work my, our finances, because I just didn't know how to do it. I just was unfamiliar with how to separate and buying parts and funding the initial setup of the business and et cetera. Um, so that was a help because she put, she put me towards a book um, called, what is the name of the book? contractors profit first profit first for contractors and so that book I was able to open up all the different accounts it was more than just her telling me what to do I actually read and was able to actually listen to the audiobook as well to just get a full round perspective on how the account should be set up to pay ourselves to pay for different parts to make sure we have taxes 
together so there's no issues later on. So that in that aspect, 360 for that. Second, um, while waiting on um, the warranty companies, it, it's a waiting game initially. So she connected me with how we can get, con get on Thumbtack and other, you know, Google My Business and Yelp. So we were able to get business like the next day after I, our coaching call, because we were just waiting initially. We had a few people we spoke to like in the store who, oh yeah, you, can you come and fix our, you know, our, our unit because I gave them a card. But other than that, the call started coming in immediately once we got set up with Thumbtack and after our initial consultation. And then post that, I mean, we've just, everything has changed like from how we invoice out the warranty companies because my first, our first few invoices we didn't get paid much because I didn't know how to invoice. I didn't know what to charge and things like that. So Ms. Ward walked me through and now my invoices is top notch. We get paid for our jobs. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. All right. Well, we don't want to give too much away. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Hayward, you ready? All right. Let me uh, get you unmuted here. You got to unmute there, Mr. Hayward. There you go. All right, I'm here. Um, can you repeat the question just to make sure? sure no problem. Right. So, you know, we just just talk about, you know, you are working in, you're studying for IT, you got your mm -hmm. personal training business, a full-time job, and you do appliance repair. So right. as a young man with goals and who's driven, how do you mm -hmm. make the time to number one, learn appliance repair, run your business, and how has uh, our coaching helped? Okay, so uh, I'll just I'll just backtrack as far as just me starting with appliance repair. Uh, the way I got into appliance repair initially was through appliance boot camp, and I had uh, pretty much I was taking the HVAC class, and I had seen an ad for appliance boot camp. And uh, Mr. Snead was talking about uh, the financials of it, how you can make more money uh or you can make just as much money with appliances than doing the HVAC classes so I finished my HVAC classes and I went over and did appliance boot camp um the first month I started working at appliance boot camp I quit my job <laughs> like I pretty much I worked at I worked at my place for about five years um I just really always had the passion I, I always wanted to start it I always wanted to start a business I just I just didn't know what business I wanted to get into. And just the way Mr. Snead was talking, it made sense to just jump straight into appliance repair because it's a turnkey business. So pretty much with that, uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to wait to start making money. As soon as you get in, you can start uh, producing some income. Um, the only regrets I do have is that if you do have your job, you should probably keep it and learn the appliances first. But um, besides that, uh, fast forward to now, uh, uh, almost two years in, uh, I pretty much use appliance repair as a glorified part-time job. So I work, now I work in the morning times and then, cause I'll start a new job pretty soon here. So I'll be working in the mornings and then I do appliance repair probably about two hours a day, um, depending on what I'm working on, two, two to four hours a day. Um, and then it just, it just made more sense to do appliance repair rather than having a part-time job working at a, a restaurant or, a, you know, something to where it's going to demand more hours for less pay when you can do appliance repair and you can start producing pretty much full-time job income as long as you understand the skills and, and the business. So that's pretty much my story with appliance repair for now. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you had a coaching session with us now, let's first of all, give a shout out to Mike Sneed. Appliance Boot Camp is where I started. He is the man with the plan, did an awesome job this weekend in Atlanta with Encompass and, you know, representing and always coaching and uplifting the appliance industry. In fact, I definitely wouldn't be in it if it wasn't for Mr. Sneed and Appliance Boot Camp. Now, as far as clarifying and get helping you with organization, did your coaching session with us help you in that way or any other way? 100%. Um, I'm, I'm sure you already know this. You provide excellent service. Uh, one of the ways, I'll just go ahead and put out there. One of the ways you really helped me was as far as uh, knowing how to bill clients. Um, my billing wasn't, I was, at first when I started, I was billing out very low. 
and I was having to do more work and getting paid uh, pretty much at the bare minimum. The way that you had taught me was to make sure you, you build high and do less work. That way, I'll just put it for an example. So rather than fixing, going to five homes, fixing five appliances, say, I'm just gonna throw a number out. So you're getting paid a thousand dollars fixing all five of those. The way you had taught me to build was to just build higher on the individual, but make sure your work is uh is matching that also. And then you'll be able to like pretty much maximize your time. All right. Well, awesome, man. Well, I'm very proud of you studying for your IT exams. You got that that better job, plus you're doing appliance repair and you got your personal training. Very proud of you. And I'm so happy to see that you can do all things. I love it. Oh, Gio, yeah. you ready? All right, you got to unmute. Ah, there you go. Hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Hey, what's up, Gio? Gio is a good, member of good. my round table so, uh, here in South Florida. So we talk every day. We pregame together and all that type of stuff. I get stuck on schematics, I call Gio. <laughs> so Gio, yeah. go ahead and tell everybody about yourself, about your channel, <laughs> and your experience in appliance repair. Yeah, well, you know, I, I started working when I was real young, you know, came from Jamaica. So once I get to uh, America here, um, you know, started going to high school. Eventually, I left high school and went to Job Corps um, and got into the electrical program. So that's where I actually started, um, you know, and from Job Corps, I went ahead and got an electrical job as a, a apprentice with an electrical company. And you know, that's how I got into the trade. And um, from, from that point, um, you know, working with electrical companies for a couple of years, went and got my journeyman, you know, doing electrical. I um, started to, to merge and to start doing general con construction and stuff like that, you know, renovating and fixing homes. And eventually I went ahead and um, started a general construction company, you know, where I was fixing homes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for, for, for quite a, a while and been dabbling and doing different type of businesses, janitorial, you know, I bought a janitorial company, uh, franchise at one point and was running that business and stuff like that. And after all those years of, you know, running business and, and doing that, I, um, back in 2017, you know, I decided that, man, I've just been working so hard and, you know, um, all, all those experience in doing all these type of businesses. I just wanted to do something, you know, something different and um, um, stop, stop like wasting so much time that, that I was wasting and, you know, running a construction business and stuff. One of the things that I really hate about doing that is like, you got to go and give people free estimate. And, you know, that's something that um, doing construction and electrical, you know, running a company like that, that's something that you have to do. So my idea was like, you know, I really just hate doing that. So I was looking for a business where um, I wouldn't have to be given free estimate and I, it wouldn't require me to also have a lot of employees because I need employees to help to do a lot of these labor and clean up and, you know, stuff like that in the construction and the electrical field. So I start looking for the ideal type of business where I won't need much or any employee if possible and where um, the profits was like really high and um, you know, uh, just uh, not not wasting a lot of time running around giving people free estimates and stuff. So, you know, I just start uh, searching. I'm always having an open mind, so I'm always looking for, you know, opportunity and stuff, you know. Um, and I came across appliance repair, the appliance repair trade, and, you know, I started reading into it more and studying it more and uh, four years ago, I just decided, you know, hey, this is what I wanted to do because, you know, I love all the benefits and everything that it's provided. It's 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 a mobile business. I can do it from anywhere, and um, it's it's a a skilled trade business. So, you know, when you're doing like general construction or handyman services, you know, every customer you go give an estimate, you go give an estimate for painting or something like that. They're looking at the estimate, they're thinking, oh, this is this is how you know and paint them myself. You know, with appliance repair, you know, 
thoughts like that is not even in the customer head because they don't know what's wrong with the appliance or what's going on. All they know is it's broken and, you know, they're looking at you like a savior. You tell them you could fix it, you know, all they're thinking about is like, you know, wow, you know, how much and when can you do it? You know, versus with construction and electrical, you know, it's, you know, they're thinking about it in certain things. Homeowners probably thinking the possibility in their head, oh, I can do that. Or they can get Johnny or their friend to do that and, you know, stuff like that. So this is a really skilled in demand, recession proof, you know, pandemic proof business that we, you know, just proved um, through the last pandemic we've been through. Um, and from all my experiences that I've been through, this is actually one of the best business in the world to be in. And, you know, so very glad I got in when I did. And, you know, I've been loving it ever since. Outstanding. So I got a question, Gio. Do you feel that it's, I, I get a lot of questions about creating like a pregame group or a Facebook group for people to come or, you know how David mm -hmm. Shans has the morning meetup? Every yeah. morning people. So people who are full-time in the industry or want to get involved to like, for instance, when we first started, right? It'd been yeah. great if we could have had a place we could have came, basically. Absolutely. And, you know, before the jobs, the day before, you yeah. know, and kind of go over it and pregame with somebody who had experience one on one. Absolutely. So we actually are creating that um, because, mm -hmm. you know, with me, my plate is so full. So <laughs> I was like, how yeah. much can yeah. I really do? <laughs> but the bottom line is when you see a need, like when I was coming through, I, like, for instance, we actually, me and you do this every day. Like mm -hmm. Gio and I mm -hmm. talk in the morning and at night. And we talk about yeah. our day, what we're doing and issues. And like, anytime I'm out in the day and I see something mm -hmm. I've never seen, I'll take a picture and send it. Yeah, absolutely. Like prime example, absolutely. we were, uh, I saw something called a solderless welding machine where it's no, mm -hmm. you don't need torches or anything. Oh yeah, that, that's nice. Unreal. First time I was and, seeing that one. And it actually heats up the metal and then melts. So that way you don't damage mm -hmm. anything in the customer's house, no smoke, things like that. So. And then we, the other day we were dealing with a cooktop. Geo had never mm -hmm. seen where, uh, you know, we saw like the lights that tell you to All the indicators on. switch for each button, yeah. Yeah, like it's stuff that we're all gonna see. And so as a community, if we could come together, share those things and then kind of knock out, like prime example, I just explained to a young man the other day about Whirlpool and the ice makers and dealing with the optics. You know, a lot of people, okay, with the, mm -hmm. they don't know how to jump and make the valve activate or jump to do this and yeah. jump to do that. And most people are intimidated when they first get into appliance repair. They don't want to take the cover off an ice maker, then grab a little jumper wire and jump nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're Sticking scanning it in electricity because they're trying <laughs> to learn. But there are mm -hmm. ways to do it. You know, they don't know to check the ice maker for ice first to see if it's delivering, you know, and then they don't understand that the demise or the check the temp. So you have to walk people through this. And appliance mm -hmm. repair is not difficult. What's difficult is breaking it down to me, I think is in layman's terms for people who are not familiar with the technical side or the mm -hmm. way appliances work. Like me, I hate mm -hmm. dishwashers, but I know they're simple as hell, but I, I still get stuck when I deal with one that's got the little damn orange ball. Yeah. And if the orange ball is not where it's supposed to be, then it won't drain. I'm they like, ain't going to drain. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. So we're definitely creating that for everyone. Uh, Gio, yeah. you want to let them know yeah. what your channel is, and then we're going to go over to the pages. Oh, yeah. You guys can find me out at uh, Upset Entrepreneur. We're going to put the link in the description below. Mm -hmm. That way you guys can find my channel there. But absolutely, right, a lot of great content. Yeah, he does a lot of things where he walks through a schematic. He walks mm -hmm. you through a schematic on a job he's working on, things that he find that, you know, that's not like a basic schematic, but things Absolutely. difficult the other techs may run into. Well, thanks for sharing, Gio, and yeah. thanks for being on the round. Yeah, no problem. And I think that that group will be very helpful and, you know, yeah, for a lot of people because that's something that we were looking for when we were just starting out. It wasn't even available. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to let the pages go so we can get this wrapped up and we can get prepped for our uh, three o'clock call. We got uh, mm -hmm. Superman and Superwoman, uh, the parents of the year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how y'all doing today? Hey, we're great, man. Thanks for joining us. I know you work today and uh, 
And you know, I'm I I don't even know who Mrs. Page is over there. She, the first time I met her, she was camera shy. I'm like, dang, she she showed up on the screen. Yeah, but uh <laughs> yeah, <all up. laughs> yeah, but anyway, if you guys I wanted you guys here because like I said, you represent that uh family business and that supportive couple that have your own interests and own jobs going on in a full family, a growing family with additional financial responsibilities. If you could just share with the world how you got an appliance repair, why it's working for you, and what you see for the future. Okay, well, I got into appliance repair because I uh, saw uh, JT and Mike Sneed on YouTube. And before that, uh, while that was going on, I had a resale business on eBay. So I had about three or 4,000 items on eBay that I was selling. And I had a small warehouse. And uh, November, I think, of 2019, I flew out to North Carolina. I flew to Atlanta and drove to North Carolina and uh, took the class, came back. And uh, it was, you know, during the time the pandemic hit, because I, I was like in that, saying, OK, well, we're going to wait till the beginning of the year, get everything going. Then pandemic started going on and uh, kind of slowed me down. But, you know, so it wasn't a big deal because I, I already had a job, so I wasn't really pressed or anything. Started going a little bit in 2020 and uh, warranty was slow. It's really, really competitive as I found out down here in Dallas and particularly North Texas area. It's really competitive. There's a lot of repair companies in there and they, they kind of pop up, pop out. But anyway, so just progressing, progressing. And last year is really when I kind of hit my stride and started going. So I worked full time uh, from but seven to 3.30 every day. And then I work in my appliance repair company after that. So about between two to four hours, just depending on me, how many calls I have for that warrants your COD, just, you know, just depends. But uh, yeah, so I really, really kind of overwhelmed myself at first in the appliance repair because I signed up for Angie's List. I signed up for Home Advisor. I signed up for Warranty Company. I was just spending money out the butt and uh, just running, running, running. And, 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 and even now, I still, I'm going to finishing up the Appliantology schematic type of course. And I'm finding out there's so many things that I still don't know, you know. And when I watch the videos from MSA and, and I go through them, now I'm starting to see as I go through the appliantology, yes, I might have known one thing why this does this, but I didn't know, know why it did it. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Just, you know, working still, but also just trying to build the appliance repair company out here. And uh, um, yeah, that, that's where I'm at right now. Well, I number one commend the fact that you are realizing the importance of, of maintaining the training. See, the, a lot of times when we're mechanically inclined, we so used to tearing shit apart, putting it together, done. And we don't think about it because it's actually a gift. But then when you actually drill down into the nuts and bolts, not only does it help you as a professional and an entrepreneur, but it helps you as a tech when you're in that home because you just shut down, you just, your diagnostic time just got cut in half. You don't have to tear it down. You can most of the time diagnose it from the board or even the symptoms because you're mm -hmm. that in, you engaged in it. So I got a question for Mrs. Page. Now, last year when I met Mrs. Page, uh, you know, <laughs> she was looking sideways. So how is everything going? I mean, I know you have a full-time job because you got Superman over there who think he can do all things through uh, Christ who strengthens him. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? So how are you as a, a spouse and as a business partner? How you How's that relationship going? And, and what do you see with appliance repair? How are you able to balance it, take care of the kids, support them, and reach our financial, personal, and professional goals as a family? Okay, first, I'm going to be completely honest. When he first started this whole entrepreneur, <laughs> getting an entrepreneur job, I was I was totally against it. Um, he's been working at a job that pays very well, in my opinion. So I was, why are you, you know, <laughs> you want to do this? Why are you want to grab this entrepreneur? Um, so it took me a little bit. Believe me, it took me a while to get on board. Um, once I saw his passion and his understanding of why he wanted to do this, I became, I 
became more open to it. Um, like he said, seeing money go out to all these different companies trying to get on board, I was like, what are you doing? But he became very successful in doing it all. Um, I believe last we spoke, it was hard because he didn't want to let go of a lot of his responsibilities. He wanted to do all the billing, contacting everyone. I was like, you let me do that part. I mean, I'm really good at customer service. I've done this all my life. Let me handle that part and you just handle the, um, <laughs> you know, the going after the jobs. He's allowed me to do more, more of it. Um, especially when it comes to calling the warranty companies, he, he, I think he feels that I'm good at talking to them and, you know, providing information to them. Customers, I haven't really talked to as many customers as I would like. I think I would be, because he becomes emotionally attached to these customers. I'm not. <laughs> we're coming to do a job and we're going to, you know, we're going to be done with it. Um, I think my background is customer service and things like that helps him become successful. He's taught me how to do the billing. Um, we created um, a template where he fills it out and eventually, you know, I'm sure he'll bring out more, custom, you know, more employees to work for him. So we feel that we created this template where uh, he answered all the questions. So when I call the warranty company, I don't have to sit there and text him every five mm -hmm. minutes or every five seconds, ask him, um, did you take the payment or, you know, what's the inches of the trim kit? You know, look, I've learned even learn, learn, learn <laughs> stuff about stuff. Um, so we create this template to help us. I think that's made us a whole lot better as well. But being a mom, um, and during this whole time when he was started this, I had just started college again. We went back to college. So we balanced college life and then these kids, and then now we have a child that's going off to college. So with all that, I think we're doing really well, but we, we have a lot of growing to do, I think. Well, you know, I just really want to commend you, you guys because, um, like I said, I, I definitely see the growth. I love seeing the smiles. I'm so happy that Miss Page is front row center. <laughs> you know, I, when I first met her, she was looking, she had that sideways, like, okay. But, you know, this is what I love about coaching, though, is because the constructive part, you know, and a lot of times, you know, after I coach people, sometimes they might feel like I'm a little pushy and I'm harassing them, but I'm following up because I understand how easy it is to slide back. And I know how it is to be in them dark corners and them twisting turns at dead man's curve and be like, uh-uh. You know, and there's nobody there to just give you just a little, a little nugget, you know, but you guys are doing exceptionally well. I love the template uh, concept, which is great because you have to have standards of operations. And, you know, the fact that you guys are building generational wealth is great, you know, and that goes for everybody else too. You got Nicole over here. She's uh, definitely doing that because she's got three boys over there. She homeschooling. And, you know, it's imperative, you know, that they understand what it is to be an entrepreneur you know, and to see their parents work together. And that's a beautiful thing. You got Gio down here with his, mm -hmm. you know, kids oh, yeah. and family. I think, what do y'all go to Disney World or something last Yeah, week? just went to Disney, take the kids out. Yeah, Three so days. <laughs> it's nice to see people really not only living the American dream, but at another level. Because, you know, the reality is people of color, we've always had multiple jobs. We knew we had yeah. to get up and not work you know, long, not just work long and harder, but be smart and better. And I just love it when I don't hear the excuses. So for everybody Absolutely. that's listening, just understand <laughs> these are the reasons why Miss Ward be telling you, don't do it. Don't call me with no excuses because I look at, I look at proof every day. Yeah. So guys, uh, we're going to go over here and support Erica's channel over at Classy Klein. Uh, these, uh, the, um, these students will be on that channel answering questions. Um, it's going to be interesting because we're going to be talking about ways to make money in appliance repair, but I'm sure it's going to be some uh, interesting questions coming out of the live feed. Because if it's a live chat, you know, people have questions, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. because they want to know just like they were where we were. They started by asking questions. How does it work? And I think one thing that most people don't understand, and I'm going to say this, and hopefully it's the last time I have to say it, there's no secret sauce. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. Hard work know, and consistency. Work and strategy. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, guys, thank y'all for taking the time to meet with me. And uh, I will see you over on Mrs. Uh, Erica's channel, Classy Klein, at 3 o'clock. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You. Thanks, everybody. See y'all later. Y'all good, though, right? Anybody got Absolutely. questions before we sign off? Is that Eastern time or Standard time? We don't stand it over. Well, you know what? Oh. Look, it's it. Look, 
for her <laughs> if, that's, if I'm gonna be honest with you. So that's the link. So I'm gonna click on the link and look because I was telling them before you got on the thing about how her VAs are handling it. So I had to already cuss them out this morning. Okay, <laughs> for real, he didn't get the Titan right. He had Tim Jackson up there instead of me on the pen. I'm like, you. <laughs> I mean, I love Tim. That's my dude. He tell it like it is, but God, eh. yeah, hey. But hey, I can't knock it. You know, paying them five dollars an hour, what you expect? VA in Philippines, I'm sure. And then they wonder why I don't use it. Y'all don't never see me tell you to use a VA ever. <laughs> yeah, but for real, any questions on your businesses? Any things you guys need me to address for you while you're on here? Any issues you're running into? Not right now. She know I'll reach out though. Oh, you will. Okay. <laughs> <I'm gonna see. laughs> all right. All right. I'll see you guys at three o'clock. All right. Thanks all right, guys. Thank all you all. Right. Thank you. See ya.